Welcome to Ice Cave Radio. Your host over here, along with the other host, Charmer. That's right. Who's uh, you know things are looking a little bit darker on your side uh, at the at the moment. You're feeling slightly under the weather. I've been told, but that's not going to stop you. Oh no, because today we're doing sort of a spoiler mega episode. We're going to take a look at every card for Twilight of the Galaxy that's been spoiled so far. There's going to be a lot to talk about there. Uh, Charmer, I was going to ask how you're feeling like usual, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to ask that. I'm going to ask, uh, is there any aspect in particular that you're excited about talking about the cards from today? I'm going to say aggression. Okay. Or cunning, because those are the Asajj and Sabine ones true uh obviously we know through the the stuff that's been shared um we have asaj in this set we have sabine in this set those are where they reside they are two of my favorite characters so i'm naturally excited for them um outside of that bias though i i really do think that there's a lot of stuff in aggression that looks pretty exciting even mm -hmm. for non-traditionally aggressive decks um i think that there is some mid-range potential there even potentially uh control options uh it's it's really getting some help so far from what i've seen in set three that's cool yeah i mean there's a lot of exciting cards to talk about one event in particular that i'm very uh interested in, in discussing um but uh i i should say too this is going to be all the cards that are spoiled uh, up to 9-11. So if you're watching this after 9-11, I know, I know, it's it's the day, what can, what can you say? But uh, so if it's, if you're, this episode is obviously going to come out on like uh, 9, what, 14 or something like that, the Saturday. And so uh, if there's anything that gets spoiled after that, obviously we would not have seen it yet because we're recording it today on Wednesday. Uh, just so you know where we're going to kind of do the cutoff. It's everything up to this point, everything up to, to today, uh, Wednesday, September the 11th. Uh, but uh, <laughs> let's let's move on. You just can't get it. That you know what? That date is ruined. Thanks a lot. Yeah, that date is ruined. Yeah. You can't you can't ever. Uh, okay, as an American, you can't ever like bring up that date ever without feeling just like a little bit bummed out. I will say, perhaps it's just from you know growing up mm -hmm. during that time and and experiencing it and whatever. Yeah, there's something weird that registers in my mind when i hear 9 11 specifically that's why i chuckled because that's the way you said it well it's um, like you can't get away from it it is the same either way yeah september 11th like, sounds I, the same to me oh so i don't know why maybe it's just because of like regionality but hmm. whenever i hear september 11th it's just like another date but when people specifically oh. say like 9 11 then hmm. i know they're referencing the tragedy but i wasn't um, i was just referencing the day the day well, that I is know, today but... and it happens to be the anniversary of that that horrible horrible day uh for those of you who didn't live through that uh that was a that was a day man like i bet anybody in the u.s can tell you exactly what happened basically from like sun up to sundown that day i know i yeah. can but we've taken a very yeah. weird tangent uh away from uh the star wars unlimited discussion that we're gonna have uh, emergency pack. oh yeah oh wait say. it's uh, sadly, I don't have any actual packs, so this is really just uh, a sealed initiative token from Shadows of the Galaxy. Funny enough, I realize I have like, I have like a, I have two Spark of Rebellion and three uh, Shadows of the Galaxy OP packs that I haven't opened in my backpack. Oh, from a, well, so we'll open one of the uh, Shadows of the Galaxy one to get us back on track here. Let's do that. Let's see what we get. Hoping for uh, something in foil. I don't have a lot of foil OP stuff yet. We have the Hyperspace, Phase 3 Dark Trooper. Very cool. We have mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. OP Pike Sentinel. Oh, okay. And... So you're very defensive so far. Oh, all right. A Relentless Pursuit. That's a, definitely one of my favorite cards this set. I like to run it in Cad Bane, a lot of other things. And it's got the cool alternate Cad Bane art. So there you go. Yeah. Fun little pack. I'm with you. My foil pulls so far for Shadows of the Galaxy have not been the best. I feel I like don't I've know. gotten way less than I did last set. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Well, let's, let's test this. Hold on. I've got one of those Spark of Rebellion OP packs. Let's just open one of these and see if we get a foil. Let's, let's just see. All right. I'm opening it right now. That's all right. Okay. Oh, that's uh, a, a reminder that those ones were not paper. C3PO. That's C3PO. Right. Battlefield Marine. And hey! just Greedo. It's not foil, though. Hey, let, me, uh, foil. let me ask you a question. How much sure. does that Battlefield Marine cost? To play. <laughs> Hold on, let me read it. It's two. It's two. <laughs> Shut up, by the way. I'm just ribbing. It happens. It you. happens to the best of us. All right. I know. I was. I will say Listen once again. I was a cunning Sabine player. I never played the Battlefield Marine. 
I've never, I have actually never played a deck with Battlefield Marine in it. Funny enough. Like oh, I, I have the played a, a, a couple. So I have played flavors of the Green Sabine because I've played her every which way that could be played. All right. Uh, but also, turns out that card's very good in Leia as well. Well, so what Charmer is referencing, if you watched our most recent Conquer the Cave episode, which you absolutely should because the games were great, I uh, my brain just turned off for a moment. I started talking about things as if the Battlefield Marine was a one cost and it could be fit into a turn. It could definitely not be fit into. So that's, uh, that's what Charmer is bringing up. And I bring that up because you should go watch Conquer the Cave. It's awesome. The games are really cool. It's fun to watch our Discord members duke it out in a 1v1. We still have not had anyone win two weeks in a row yet. That's kind of amazing. Uh, and speaking of Discord members, it's time to talk about one in particular, a one, the one, the only lightsaber, Larry, who's been with us uh, basically since the very beginning, one of our hyperfoil wampas. As you know, uh, you can, or maybe you don't know, if you are a Patreon subscriber, there is a reward where you can send in a video intro of yourself for either a show or a segment in the show, depending on the tier. Uh, or, like Lightsaber Larry, you can just ask for a shout-out as well. So here is your shout-out, Lightsaber Larry. Uh, we appreciate you being part of our community very much. You've been a daily contributor to multiple channels, multiple discussions, and it's always fun to hear your take on things. So thanks once again for being uh, a patron. And, uh, yeah. We appreciate it. We appreciate you. When you hear this shout out, Larry, I need you in the Discord to answer a question for me. What color is the lightsaber for lightsaber, Larry? I need to have a visual whenever mm. I think of you from now on. What color? I don't know why, but mentally up until this point, I've always imagined it as yellow. But if that is incorrect, I, I need to be corrected. So I, I know that Lightsaber Larry has talked many times about being a big Mace Windu fan and really hoping that uh, if we get a, a Mace culture. Windu leader in here that it's going to be a good one. Uh, I'm like, I, I still, obviously the Mace Windu leader hasn't been spoiled yet for Twilight of the Galaxies, but I would be shocked if we don't have one. Like, it's 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 a Clone Wars expansion. There should be a Mace Windu leader in there, right? So hopefully we'll get the one there. But my point in bringing that up is that I would wager purple then. Because of the uh, because of the Mace Windu fandom, so we'll see, we'll see. You'll have to let us know in Discord, and uh, you out there as well, other patrons that have this reward uh, on the docket, definitely send those videos in. There's a link in the uh, special patrons only channel that you can drop that in in a Google Drive, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to get that out there as well. But enough about all that other stuff. I'm ready to talk spoilers. Shall we get started? Yes, please, because I all right. Well, Can't go. wait to talk about There's our Lord one. and Savior, <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi. Sorry, every Patient time I mentor. see this version, I, I th immediately think of all of the, you know, the memes and the jokes yep. about people replacing, you know, pictures of Jesus with Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, my favorite prank, actually, is when people go to, like, their grandma's house and they replace or they leave behind a, a picture of Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi as, as if he's Jesus. And this artwork, I, I think, just really sells it further. <laughs> you know, somebody out there that wants to make a, a new uh, a new New Testament-centric movie is like, wait a second. Hmm. I wouldn't recommend it, for the record. But the thought is out there. Anyway, our Obi-Wan Kenobi leader, patient mentor, vigilance heroism, and an action. Exhaust Obi-Wan. Heal one damage from a unit. Very interesting. We haven't seen a lot of unit healing-centric stuff. I feel like in general in the game, so that's notable. Force Jedi Republic are the traits. Flips on six. Let's check out that flip side charmer. It is a four seven, and it's a sentinel as well. On attack, heal one damage from a unit. If you do, deal one damage to a different unit. So Obi-Wan, uh, you know, will heal you, but damage somewhere else. So I think this is a... It's a very interesting leader, uh, and I'm curious how big of an impact healing a unit for one potentially every turn will make in a game. Because the number one is a big deal in Star Wars Unlimited. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to call Obi-Wan like the strongest leader we're seeing in the set. I don't think he's there. But I do see this ability and kind of wonder what can be done with it. What's interesting to me is that it is potentially a very powerful effect while also being a limiter because you only get mm -hmm. to deal the damage if you heal, right? The way this yes. is written is heal one damage, but this has the if you do, right? The rule of thumb in Star Wars Unlimited is traditionally you do as much of the card you can, but because they added that very important if you do, mm -hmm. 
this means that you're not going to be getting those free damage pings unless you have damage to heal. Now, the good news is your leader has Sentinel built in, right? That's one of the ways to turn him on. Uh, the other good news is there are already cards that have been spoiled, his spaceship in particular, mm -hmm. that give you ways to kind of self-damage as well. Um, that being said, I, I agree with you. I think it's a very powerful ability when it's working. Uh, even just getting rid of shields is a really big deal, but... Uh, the one damage adds up. We've seen it over and over again, uh, especially in limited. Uh, you and I are both big fans of Cad Bane, where mm -hmm. even if it's not directed damage, uh, the one damage can can really shift the tide if you can take advantage of it. So I, yeah. I'm a fan of this leader. Yeah, it should be fun to build around him. Uh, anytime heal one damage, do an extra damage, anytime that one damage comes into play, it throws off the math around regular trades. So breakpoints get messed up. So definitely a leader to keep an eye on. We've got a ton of spoilers to get through, though, so we're going to move kind of fast today. Our second one is going to be none other than Padme Amidala. Go ahead and tell us all about her. Padme serving the Republic has coordinate on the leader side, yeah. but... You also have to pay a one resource cost and exhaust her, but you get to search the top three cards of your deck for a Republic card, reveal it, and draw it. And I really like the design of this simply because, as, as one person said, it's like a Mon Mothma on a stick, if you will. Mm -hmm. It's a reusable Mon Mothma effect, and the reason that I love that from a design perspective is because uh, they're both senators right in her case are her traits are naboo republic and official i think that we're going to see officially used in place of a true senator trait uh but the fact that they give you this kind of um you know sense of cohesiveness right that, that's what they uh, intend to do is they seek out the help that the galaxy needs from the senate chambers i, I really like now mm -hmm. uh, on five resources uh, your epic action, obviously, you deploy her. She becomes a 2-7 and has Restore 1. Also continues to have Coordinate, except now it's on attack. Search the top three cards of your deck for a Republic card, reveal it, and draw it. And in both of these instances, the other thing that I would like to point out is, uh, just like with Mon Mothma, except Mon is Rebels, uh, it is Republic card, not Republic unit. And in the first set, we had rebel cards that were still events right right um i suspect we're going to have the same thing with republic events and and so forth here so that's another thing to keep an eye on i haven't checked the traits of all of them but i'll, I'll imagine there's one in uh, what we're going to look at today we'll see i've looked at all of these as they've come out but i haven't really taken time to sit down and chat about them yet so it'll be fun yeah. the one thing that stands out with padme for me uh is that one of her traits is naboo and we don't see a lot of planets being traits like we don't see a uh, kashik uh, trait for Wookiees, for instance. So I'm very curious about that. You know, are we going to get nah. some sort of Naboo slash Gungan kind of like a team up deck at some point in the future? Does this open the door for a Jar Jar Binks leader at some point? The Naboo trait to me is very interesting. I agree with you, actually. So I think that the reason it is very specifically Naboo as opposed to uh, more of like a racial trait like Gungan is because it's going to okay. represent I think we're going to get something that represents that scene where the Naboo government army is joined by the Gungan army against the separatists against yeah. the droids right and so the best way to represent that tribally is to just refer to something that they have in common in which case that's their home planet um, but I do think we're going to have like Gungans working with uh, you know maybe Captain Panaka for example who knows yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's from what we've seen so far, this set, uh, Twilight of the Republic, it doesn't seem like there's as much episode one specific stuff yet. There's like Darth Maul and things like that, but we haven't seen any pod racing things, first of all. We haven't seen like a, a Watto or a, a young Anakin or anything like that yet. The Obi-Wan is a Clone Wars Anakin. So I feel like uh, a lot of that Gungan stuff is going to wait until we get an expansion that you know, gives us more of the episode one content. Because so far with the reveals, I'm just not feeling it this set, you know? So I wonder if this is something that's going to come in way down the road. That's that's my theory with this anyway. But but we'll see. Anyway, on on her ability, I, I, a lot of people have been like, oh, you know, it's so many hoops to jump through. You need coordinate. You need to pay one. I would wager that coordinate is much easier to get online than people think it is in this set. I think we've seen a lot of token generation that's going to help with that. So with that in mind, uh, 
you have a situation where you would have a leader that would just tip over and draw uh, for free, which I have a feeling would get pretty strong pretty fast. So I think that one cost is there from getting her deck uh, to from uh, to in order to prevent her deck from kind of getting out of control. Because I think being able to draw, uh, you know, search the top five and draw, um, you know, for free after you have coordinate online uh, lets you tailor your plays perhaps a little bit too well. Uh, I would wager that. Um, she was maybe tried at one point without that, and then they stuck it on there to kind of create a little bit of a curb. Uh, I think she's going to be a pretty good leader. I think she's going to be a higher skill cap leader because anytime you have access to a lot of searching, the decisions you make while searching are very important when it comes to you winning that game. Uh, but it looks like a, it looks like a fun leader to build around. I'm I'm excited to uh, I like command anyway as an aspect, so I'm kind of hyped to build this one. All right, let's move on to. Another new leader. For some reason, yeah. puts the, the portraits in front of the leader modes. But there is Maul. That's right. Arrival in Darkness. Definitely looks, you know, speaking of uh, episode one, this looks like the episode one Maul. He's got his regular legs. Hasn't been uh, sliced in twain quite yet. Aggression, villainy. Action, exhaust him. Attack with a unit. It gains overwhelm for this attack. Uh, he flips on six. Becomes a 6-6. Six, six with overwhelm natively and each other friendly creature unit each other friendly unit gains overwhelm i slipped into magic speak for a second there uh but this leader looks quite strong uh for a common leader that just is going to be easy to build around easy to make work when you're doing trades and just chipping in for a little bit of overwhelm damage theoretically like every turn with this leader that's going to add up to like a lot of damage and a lot of board control simultaneously so I, I think Maul could be a pretty great villainy aggro option here this next set. Yeah, I think that Maul has a lot of potential to be like the top end of an aggressive deck. There are usually two different ways you want to approach true aggressive deck building. Um, the first is you want to do as much damage as possible early on, and you want a low to the ground leader like a Sabine so that you flip first. Mm -hmm. And then you use that to your advantage, right? Because we all know that the leader turns, the flip turns are really crucial in Star Wars Unlimited. Maul flipping on what is, for the most part, the, the most predominant turn, turn six, or resource turn six, if you will, uh, is a little bit slower. But because it's a big bunch of stats with Overwhelm, I could still see this as being a, a top end. And because the action still facilitates your early turns potentially getting that additional damage in while mm -hmm. also slowing down your opponent because you're taking advantage of overwhelm um i could see him very much either being an aggressive uh styled leader which makes sense due to the aspect but also a mid-range as well a lot of mid-range decks are really just kind of focused on playing the best or most powerful unit you can on curve and so if you're always playing something that's got big stats and can take value trades, but then you start getting chip damage or incidental damage because of the overwhelm activation, uh, that also feels very strong to me. Uh, yeah. I do have one last thing I would like to point out. Uh, you said it looks like episode one, Maul. I think that I this is uh, Mandalorian throne room, Maul. Oh, uh, both okay. because of the background uh, because of the single blade lightsaber, but also it's the traits that stood out to me. Yeah, so he has force right. an underworld still, whereas uh, when we get to the unit that we know has already been spoiled later, that one has Sith. So I think that's when he's still the apprentice, and this is when he has not. They right. they tease you with real legs, but it it they cut off right before you can tell if they're uh, like the robot goat legs or not in the art. I was so. thinking spider legs because he's got the spider legs for a little while too. He's got the spider body. Oh, yeah. and then they give him like the, the goat legs or whatever. So you, you might be right though because yeah, he's missing Sith and that just makes me think, hey, that's another episode one thing that we're missing on the leader side. Obviously, we've got the unit, but we don't have a Darth Maul leader yet. So I, I you know, I'm going to say that is more evidence that we're going to get a more a deeper dive into episode one stuff down the line. At least I hope so, because that'd be fun. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at a rare base. Check that out. Yeah, uh, the Droid Manufactory, twenty four HP. So even one less than the other rare bases from set one. When you deploy a leader, create two battle tro uh, battle droid tokens. So coordinates online immediately. You have three units out. Uh, are we going to run double command Padme? I'm just terrified at the prospect of having 24 health charmer. I, I don't know. What, what do you think? Well, this is the interesting bit. On the one hand, 24 health is the lowest we've seen so far, mm -hmm. and that is scary. But 
if you are truly just trying to go wide, a lot of times by the time that it matters, like you have lost the game anyway. Uh, it's it's really only super relevant in what I would describe as like aggressive mirrors where that is, matters. And then in that case, even if you're playing against uh, like an ECL or something, you're only down by one, but you you just get additional board presence. It sure. activates coordinate much like you said, but it's also battle droid tokens specifically. We know there's a lot of stuff in the set that's going to care about that. I I am very intrigued by this base and it it's also funny to me because it's every time you deploy a leader and so on the one hand 24 seems like a nightmare for twin sons on the other hand you get two activations in twin sons ah, that's a good best. point that's a great point actually yeah i'm just thinking uh i'm gonna play you know some sort of uh some sort of aggro double command padme and then on the flip turn do this and then play attack pattern delta on the units that are out there and then just have a massive damage turn or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Attack pattern Delta, then outflank so I can attack two at once. There you go. We're thinking about now we're now we're playing with double command aggression. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Well, but it's, there's there's ahead. that. But it, what's also interesting is when you think about um, some of the other things that have been revealed that care about battle droids, even mm -hmm. though this has 24 health, it also could still be a control base as weird as that sounds. Uh, if you've got ways sure. to protect yourself or to consistently restore, the 24 also might not be a problem. Um, I think that it's likely the next card that we're going to end up talking about, or if not very, very soon, um, is something that I would highlight, right? Which is the General Grievous leader. Uh, being able to deploy him and then immediately give something Sentinel. Yeah. You know, whether you had board presence or not, you're going to get battle droids when you deploy him. So uh, that's something to consider as well. That's right. It's moving on to another rare base. That's right. This is a cunning one. This time you get 26 health. So one more than the 25 health bases back in Spark of Rebellion. And this one says each leader unit you get gets plus one attack. Again, relevant for Twin Sons. Both your leaders get plus one attack. But I think this is pretty hugely relevant for just anyone that's running this base too because again that plus one messes up a lot of math when it comes to trading into a leader something like that uh, you just don't want to play it with ray because then she can't buff herself but uh anything yeah. else i think would be would be pretty decent uh this this looks like a really fun base to run with like set one boba fett or something like that you know yeah. um cad bane you could do any sort of double uh cunning leader would work i think especially well with this but i think this is just a really really good rare base i think this is one where i'm like yeah i'll pay four health to just have plus one attack on my leader like that sounds that doesn't sound like a very big tax for the benefit to me i think this base is really good so when i saw this i was immediately drawn to some of the aggression based leaders that we've seen revealed from this set so the mall that we just talked about having one extra attack when you care so much about overwhelm totally. seems Pretty straightforward. Uh, also, Ahsoka from the starter decks because she doesn't have her bonus turned on unless you have coordinate. So this helps to make up for what could be seen as a deficiency for her, right? Where you get some of that lost power back even when you don't have coordinate active. I mean, you also get things like just simply playing set one Sabine suddenly comes out with yeah. uh, three power, which I is do love be... me Sabine. Yeah, exactly. I think it's going to be great for that. I'd probably swap from a regular standard cunning base to this for cunning Sabine. You know, if she's able to sort of come back and set three, obviously like ECL Sabine is the, the top Sabine pick right now, but I just enjoy cunning Sabine. So, so I'm looking ahead and seeing this as a potential base, but I think we're going to see this one used a lot. I think it's just really strong. Yeah. All right. Moving on to some of the uh, regular cards. We've got Ooh. the Wartime Trade Official. Tell us all about it. Wartime Trade Official is a two-cost ground unit in Villainy and Vigilance as a 1-3 stat line with Separatist and Official Traits. It says, when defeated, create a Battle Droid token. So you get a 1-3 on the board, but this is a two-drop that over the life of the game essentially gives you 2-4 in stats, which I think is really, really relevant. And the other thing that I love about this, especially as a, a Vigilance player, is the official trait. Uh, mm -hmm. Anytime I see a two drop with the word official on it, I immediately start thinking about pairing it with the Royal Guard 
because you can play this on your opening turn and then play Royal Garden turn on the Sentinel. Yeah. Uh, playing Vigilance and Command as a control deck together has always been a, a go-to. So there is a, a chance that this will just outright replace my regional governor play in many of those decks that I have played that combo in in the past. Yeah, exactly. And uh, just to catch people up too, uh, Battle Droid tokens are 1-1 one, one tokens. So uh, nice. that's what you would get out of this. So essentially you get two four of stats for two, which is also pretty good, just straight up numbers wise. But, you know, again, with something like General Griefus, you can be, uh, you know, buffing those. I think is trying to remember what his, uh, his leader side does. Yeah, just giving it Sentinel. That's right. His flip side is what buffs yeah. it. But uh, just giving something like that. Sentinel can put just an annoying roadblock in front of your opponent. Uh, one ones are kind of scary, actually, when you think about it, because you can ignore them. You're like, well, they only do one damage. But a lot of stuff is going to come in to maybe buff them. Um, you know, surprise strike even on a 1-1 one -one suddenly makes a four attack thing that can trade very efficiently. So creating tokens in this next set is going to be something to take very seriously if you're on the other side. Well, there's also the added dangers of like, it's a great way to peel off shield. I think right yeah. now in set two, shielded is actually an incredibly powerful trait and i do think that all of these tokens both the battle droids and the clone tokens are going to be very good or very efficient at getting rid of some of that uh, the other thing that i just want to highlight for this real quick before we move on uh, within the context of the set this is also a great thing for trying to help you maintain coordinate because it's kind of a sticky unit mm -hmm. and that's what i love about this from a design standpoint in the past vigilance units have been sticky because they're shielded giving them when defeated kind of gives them the same identity but in a different way so that if you get rid of this well then you still have the one one left over so if that was you know making or breaking your coordinate or whatever uh, it's still active yeah yeah that is nice from the coordinate side of things for sure let's move on to a calculating magna guard three for a three four separatist droid uh, in vigilance and villainy when played slash when a friendly unit is defeated this unit gains sentinel so a little bit of a different uh you know sentinel application here when played has sentinel for the phase and then when a friendly unit is defeated it also gains sentinel for the phase so that's kind of creating this extra mental hurdle for your opponent to think about when they're uh, thinking about attacking into your side of the board on a turn where one of these is out, right? Because it might not start the turn with Sentinel if it's already been out uh, the turn before, but then your opponent's like, all right, well, if I kill this thing, then it gains Sentinel, so then I can't attack this other thing I want to, so do I kill this first, but it's a 3-4 for 3. I think this looks like a pretty solid uncommon. Um, this is one where if I'm playing uh, Villainy Vigilance in Limited, uh, I'm going to be, I think, quite happy to pick it up. I adore this card because exactly what you said with the the mental hurdles for your opponent. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to decide, even if it doesn't have Sentinel, do I want to go through it? Uh, do I need to take initiative because they might play it from hand and then it'll auto have Sentinel? What happens if my opponent has initiative and they take a value trade where they destroy one of my units and theirs survives? Normally, I would potentially want to crack back and finish their unit off. Suddenly, this is in the way, right? Because they got rid of one of your units. Because this is... Um, oh, it's when a friendly unit is defeated. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I skimmed the... Uh, when I just saw, like, when a unit is defeated. All right, oh, so... Huh. Um, well, that'd be pretty good, bit, too. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you could still... Yeah. Uh, you know, with the droid tokens and uh, the clone tro uh, tokens as well, you could still also use those as a, a nice clean activator. Totally, yeah. Um, yeah. It, for whatever reason, when I read it the first time, it was when a unit is defeated, and I was like, man, that's so powerful. So now that, this that makes a little strong. bit more sense. I think this is a bit more reasonable, but I, I agree where I think you're going to have this online pretty much all the time. So it's going to be a great card. I think this is a card that's going to see some competitive play. Uh, certainly going to make it into some of those lists. And again, limited all-star, potentially. Let's move on. Tell us all about the Kashyyyk Defender. This is a two-cost ground unit in Vigilance and Heroism. It has a 0-5 stat line and only the Wookiee trait. I will, however, point out, if you look at the art here, uh, the blades there are blades that have appeared in our cave pole that we, we have actively talked about. So good oh. uh, lore callback for us. <laughs> uh, the text on the box here is it has grits, which makes sense. It's a Wookiee and it's a 0-5, but also when played... Heal up to two damage from another unit and deal that much damage to this unit. So very similar to Obi-Wan and where 
you want to do some healing uh turns on your grit as well this is uh potentially a two four for two which again very solid stat line but it's a little weird because it's not going to be an opening play two four right because there's nothing there to heal uh still I, I think a lot of potential for late game the way that i was kind of assessing this is it's almost kind of like a combat trick that leaves a body on the board right you pay two to heal two from one of your damaged units but oops i also have board presence all of a sudden yeah and use something like covert strength after you play it too and then suddenly it jumps up to you know what would it be like a it'd be like a three four at that point effectively um because well, that's, yeah no, because oh, no, you be, would heal, and then the the grit oh, it'd be would. A one, oh, the... It'd be a one six, <laughs> but that's okay. One, one six. Uh, yeah, never yeah. mind. <laughs> I don't know how grit works. I don't play woogies. Moving on. Let's talk about Captain Typho. Uh, speaking of episode one, but this is kind of like an episode two on Captain Typho. Uh, he apparently lost his eye at some point. I'm sure there's some sort of like episode of something somewhere that explains how that happened. Uh, but he's a three for a two for Vigilance Heroism Naboo Republic Trooper. When played slash on attack, give a unit Sentinel for this phase. So kind of similar to the Magna Guard Defender in that there's a way to uh, give things Sentinel rather uh, than uh, himself. He can give it to himself, of course, but he can also give Sentinel to other units too, which is kind of cool and I think kind of lore appropriate where he seems to be sort of the captain in charge of uh, Amidala's retinue, which includes like the body doubles and things like that to protect her. So, you know, essentially he's assigning the security forces where to go to protect people. So I like that he's giving out Sentinel. I think that's a nice little lore touch there. And again, Charmer, that Naboo trait, very intriguing. Yeah, that Naboo trait here on a, a captain. Like I said, I was expecting maybe to see Panaka at some point, but mm -hmm. Typho here also works. I will say this feels very strong to me within the context of this set because of the potential for so many tokens running around. And I think that that's why this has a 2-4 stat line opposed to the Magna Guard that had the 3-4. Because I think that ultimately this one is a lot more versatile. The guard just gives it to itself. So once you take advantage of that Sentinel activation, if they run through it, you don't have to deal with it anymore. But Captain Typho, if you don't deal with him directly, can continue to, you know, make clone tokens, for example, just yeah. get in your way over and over and over again. Looks good. I think it's going to be a solid card uh, to potentially include in, in some decks. And again, like, I kind of like it for limited, too, you know? Oh, I love this for limited. Yeah. Well, check it out. Here's uh, the ship we mentioned earlier, Obi-Wan's Aether Spite. Aether Sprite, rather. Uh, five cost for a 4-6 in Vigilance and Heroism. I always thought it was Aether Spite, actually. I don't know why. You know, you watch these movies and you, you see this stuff when you're like a kid. and uh, Or like a, a high schooler, in my case. And you sort of like come up with your own sort of pronunciations when you just skim the word or whatever. And then that just sticks with you for decades. I always thought it was Aether Spite. Aether Sprite. There you go. <laughs> when played obi-wan's not the spiteful type i guess not team i guess not he's spiteful towards flying though when played slash on attack you may deal one damage to this unit and two damage to another space unit so uh kind of throwing damage around jedi republic vehicle fighter uh what do you think about that jedi fighter not a force trait but uh you know another one of those traits where it's like hmm this is gonna be something yeah i I absolutely love that that is there. To me, that's like a Chekhov's gun. Um, we know, right, in the future, for example, we get a set that's going to be titled uh, Jump to Light Speed, right? Mm -hmm. And so now we have a a force, if you will, trait for space. In this case, it's Jedi. I would be shocked if we don't get more, uh, you know, Jedi ships and making that relevant when we get there. Uh, Plo Koon, for example, a very famous pilot. Right. Uh, we'll probably get his ship or some of those things. Um, I, I, I really dig that. That being said, I love that this works so directly with Obi-Wan. Uh, you, if you get both of them on the board, uh, have a lot of work that you can do because when you play this, it can damage itself, deal two damage to another space unit. And then when Obi-Wan could heal this and then deal damage to another unit. And then when you attack with this, it damages itself and hits another space unit and kind of rinse and repeat and cycle. Uh, so I love that. And, uh, you know, you mentioned him being spiteful toward flying. I do love that the, the subtitle for this, so this is Obi-Wan's Aether Sprite, but then it's, this is why I hate flying. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's doing his best, but he's going to take he's some damage best. all the way through. Yeah, that's right. Well, let's move on to 
A Knight of the Republic. Uh, not a Knight of the Old Republic, just a regular Republic. It's going to be... Oh, go ahead and tell us about this. I think I keep talking about the cards today. I'm just too excited. Yeah, you do, but yeah, that's okay. Sorry. You're, uh, you're just letting me rest over here. Uh, you need it. You need it. This is a six-cost ground unit in Heroism and Vigilance. Four, seven stat line. Has Force, Jedi, and Republic as the traits. When this unit is attacked, create a clone trooper token. I love this as a common. I um, think this is going to be very strong in limited because it is uh, hardy. And it's interesting because it doesn't have Sentinel. And so it might incentivize your opponent to leave it alone. But a 4-7 continuing to you know hit you in the face uh, could be very detrimental. But considering we've already seen several ways in this set to give things a Sentinel, uh, we just talked about Captain Typho, for example. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of ways where you're going to make your opponent go right into this guy. And it's in Vigilance. So we already know that there's also other ways uh, in sets one and two to grant Sentinel as well. Yep, that's right. I mean, it's as big as a leader, essentially. You know, uh, flips on six, quote unquote, four, seven stat line. Uh, you know, just like it makes sense that the Jedi Knight is a leader, essentially, in stats. So I do like that. Force, Jedi, and Republic. So it has both the Force and the Jedi traits. Something else to kind of think about. Moving on to a trick. Hello there. Three costs for Vigilance, Heroism, uh, Trick, Event. Choose a unit that entered play this phase. It gets minus four, minus four for this phase. So uh, this kills a lot of stuff. Uh, it also weakens a lot of stuff. Uh, this seems like a very, very strong event. Yeah, this almost makes me a little bit sad because two of the leaders that I really enjoy playing are Aiden mm -hmm. and Fennec Shand. Yeah. And it turns out this just answers both of them, even through them. Aiden's shield. <laughs> Because uh, this does say unit, does not say non-leader, so that's very, very relevant. Uh, I I do think that this is a, a very powerful card. Yeah, I I almost, uh, you know, because I've thought a lot about, all right, like, uh, you know, people are taking takedown out, and that's silly, right? But if you're running heroism, do you just put this in instead of takedown? I mean, obviously, takedown has more reach, but this just has so much more early game potential and unlike takedown where sometimes it's just dead in your hand this card is always going to be relevant in that it could you know reduce a strong unit to the point where another unit could trade in and kill it right maybe even trade and kill it and live so i think I, if you're think, running heroism this might just be a replacement for takedown i think it's going to be meta dependent personally hmm. um for a couple of reasons one this does have a timing constraint so it has to be when the unit is played if you don't have it in your sure. hand um it's not helping you if you top deck it and that unit has already hit play whereas takedown can sometimes just bail you out off the top of your deck uh, the other thing is to me anyway it's that big difference between four health and five health right so if hypothetically sabine makes her way back into the the meta after set three drops I think you would still want to run takedown because that's a clean answer and mm. if it's more either units that um, you can outright defeat with this, or if it's more units where you just care about turning them off for the turn. So like this could also be a really uh, efficient answer for when Boba Fett flips, for example, totally. because you're just making him not do anything for that turn and you might buy yourself time. So I, I do think it's going to probably depend quite a bit on what you expect to see when you're planning for the field. Yeah, I mean, talking about Boba Fett, I uh, would just basically let you kill him super easy because Boba Fett would become a zero one for the phase or a zero what like three actually for zero the phase? three zero three yep. for the phase yeah so either way very easily uh, dealt with um, I think it's a scary card I think a lot of people in heroism are going to be running it even if it does have that caveat of the thing has to have entered play this turn go ahead all right. This next one is Royal Guard Attaché. This is a two cost ground unit in only Vigilance. Has a two five stat line, which is kind of crazy for a two drop with only one aspect. Has Naboo and Trooper for the traits, but the reason it is a two five is when played, deal two damage to this unit. So enters essentially as a 2-3 but has the ability to be healed up and again we've already seen cards like obi-wan that care about that sort of thing so i think that this is uh going to fit well within the confines and context of this set 
Yeah, that's right. And yet another Nabu, uh, another Nabu unit. So perhaps when the big Nabu battle happens eventually, this will be a, a prime candidate for a deck like that. All right. You know, actually, now I kind of want to see like a Nabu base that buffs Nabu things specifically, right? Either buffs Nabu, Nabu things or maybe it's um, something that works mostly with Nabu. So like that's a, mm -hmm. a almost like a, a key indicator, even though it doesn't have to be that. Like you could have something that's like all of your, you know, almost like a Krennic, right? Like your damaged yeah. units get plus one or... Uh, you know, speaking of Krennic, this also is great with uh, Krennic. This this is essentially a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, very true. Moving on to uh, Infantry of the 212th. It's funny because Highway 212 was like a highway I drove along from college back to my parents' place when I was in college. Strange. Maybe they... Uh, Maybe they, you know, Fantasy Flight is uh, based in, in Minnesota. The Highway 212 is in Minnesota. Maybe. I don't know. Unless there's some other lore. I just don't know around this. That's probably more likely. Three for a 2-4. Vigilance only. Uh, if you have Coordinate, this unit gains Sentinel. So it's another Conditional Sentinel. But, you know, again, you know, how hard is it going to be to activate? We know there's a lot of uh, Clone Trooper token generating stuff. Maybe, maybe not. This card is a little bit less exciting, but, you know, obviously if you have uh, Coordinate, then it gets that extra keyword. Um, I'm not super high on this card. I think it's just going to be one of those, you know, nice limited cards to have if you're doing something with Clone Troopers, and that's about it. Yeah, I mean, it's a common, so yeah, yeah. going to stand out in Limited for sure, especially Draft, because it's also not locked to Heroism or Villainy. Uh, I will say... I do kind of appreciate the mental math your opponent has to do if you have this and exactly one other unit because then they have to say like you know are they going to play a unit or are they going to attack first if they play a unit do i want to deal with the sentinel etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm -hmm. but uh, i don't at least at the moment see this making its way into any constructed style decks unless it's something that really cares about you know republic or clone or trooper those are some pretty important traits i will give it mm -hmm. that so there is hope in that regard yeah trooper especially there's been so much stuff especially from set one that that benefited troopers so you know if the other traits can come through too you, you could maybe see that there just to fill out sort of that trait stuff but then it's sort of a placeholder until something better comes along down the road but we'll see next oh you've got a good one to talk about now yeah, so uh, next is Key Adi Mundi. This is a five Ki cost Adi ground. Uh, you Ki know what? He, he, no, he he is a uh, Key Adi. He's, you know, much like with your either uh, Spite versus Sprite. Um, Key Adi? Uh, uh, I no, yeah, you're saying it correctly. I just, <laughs> uh, much like how you were like, man, I always thought it was either Spite. Like, I. Yeah. I I read his name long before I remembered like hearing it, and so I read it that way, and it's been very hard for me to undo that. I feel that. Um, yeah. Also, I was about to make the joke like he doesn't he doesn't get the respect in my mind because I I blame him for Anakin. Here here's oh, my wow. my short tangent. Uh, the whole reason that Anakin like went crazy was because he was trying to have his relationship with Padme in the dark because it wasn't supposed to be allowed. Mm -hmm. And then in his face, every time he goes to the Jedi Council, is this guy who has multiple wives because he gets a, you know, low birth what? rate exception. Um, really? And so it's just, yeah, That's he has multiple Lord? wives canonically. <laughs> yes. So it's wow. like taunting him. I had no idea. Um, I yeah. Had no idea. So I, you know, it's my yeah, running like joke that he's the reason that Anakin's upset every time he goes. He's got him, and then he's got Mace Windu going like, "You're not good enough to be a master." And he's like, "Well, of course I hate these guys." Wow. Um, that is. So anyway, that is heavy. Uh, Mr. Mundy, right, is a Mr. five cost Mundy. ground unit and has just the vigilance trait, so not heroism, which I do find uh, interesting. Just vigilance uh, has a five seven stat line, which is pretty solid for a five drop. Has Force Jedi and Republic traits. And then when you have coordinate, uh, when an opponent plays their second card each phase, you may draw two cards. It's so wild. this is a 5-7 stat line that when I saw this, I, I was like, this is crazy if you are really trying to play a swarm deck or go wide. 
because you if you have coordinate right you probably are playing a bunch of stuff yourself and your hand might be empty but the good news is every time your opponent tries to answer things you're just gonna fill right back up so i think that this is uh really really intriguing and i i dig it a lot yeah it's a legendary card uh we should bring that up too it's our the first oh, yeah. legendary i believe that's been spoiled for twilight of the galaxy and uh, twilight of the republic rather Shadows of the Galaxy, Twilight of the Republic. Everything's like kind of dark and moody, isn't it, so far in these first two yeah. releases? But uh, but yeah, Legendary as well. So 5 for 5, 7, great stat line, Force Jedi Republic, great great traits. But that ability, uh, this is a card that you're going to need to deal with immediately, but it's not going to be easy to deal with. I do wonder about the no heroism kind of thing. There was like kind of an implication in the acolyte that he was uh he was a bit of a, a shady dude maybe too and then he was the guy who just like uh in the prequels denied the existence of the sith at all which is kind of funny if he knew about what happened to the acolyte but that's a whole different story uh either way he seems like one of the shiftier less heroic frankly jedi so i i think it's it's interesting that they're able to release a Jedi character and not put the heroism trait on there. I'm surprised that one went through, but it's kind of cool. It's cool that we have this option. I know that there's always that running joke about like Darth Jar Jar, but sure. This this guy I've always thought like rides that line a bit more canonically cuz again, like I said, also has multiple wives. <laughs> so He's just breaking all the rules while also so. denying the existence of the rule breakers. He's just like nothing to see here. So, yeah. That is that is crazy. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars lore is is uh is something else, man. Well, there's there's Kiati Mundi composed and confident coming to a, a villainy deck near you. Pair him with Palpatine. That'd be interesting. He's just like Order yeah. 66. Sure, why not? But he died during Order 66, so I don't know. Moving on. The Invasion of Christophsis. Christophsis? Christophsis? Christophsis. Christophsis. The Invasion of Chris Christofferson. The Invasion of Criss Cross. <laughs> Gonna make you jump. The Invasion of Cryostasis. There you go. The Invasion of Chris Christie. Do you want me to take uh, this one too? Uh, sure, go ahead. <laughs> All right, I'll take another legendary. This is a 15 cost event. No, I did not stutter. 15 in Vigilance. It is a separatist plan. Now, it may cost 15. However, you do get exploit four. And if you are doing that math right now, that is a minus eight potentially. Mm -hmm. So you would have to give up four units. And then this goes from costing 15 to costing seven. So it must do something really powerful, right? Yes. Choose an opponent. Defeat each unit that player controls. So potentially an entire one-sided board wipe. But if you're playing it without paying 15, it's not as one-sided as it looks because of the exploit. But the idea, I think, is, hey, you give up some droids and then you just deal with everything. I also, I'll be honest, am kind of shocked that this is unit and not non-leader unit. Mm -hmm. Um that feels very relevant to me and I think helps the power level of this card immensely. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, uh, you're going to be having decks that generate a lot of these battle droid tokens. And so sacrificing four of those to pay seven for this seems like a pretty good deal to me. You know, if you're paying seven to remove even just a leader and one other unit, that still seems like a pretty good deal to me. So it's like a more you know bespoke super laser blast to a set to a certain extent and there's no heroism or villainy on it so either side can use this one uh it's i think this is another legendary that's kind of a banger i, th I think people are going to be using this i when i saw this immediately i was like okay this might be a reason to play command and vigilance control because if you get the base where when you deploy your leader you get two free tokens mm -hmm. That that really just means like you only have to have two other units to save your leader, essentially. If you have two units on the board, you deploy your leader and then you just exploit the two tokens and whatever was there and you get a one sided board wipe and you have your leader. That feels like such a swingy play. Yeah, yeah, it sure does. 
Uh, just a review to exploit is uh, you defeat one of your own units and reduce the cost of the card by or the cost of the card by two. So exploit four means you can potentially defeat four of your own units, reducing the cost of the card by two per unit destroyed, up to a total of eight. So that's what that's what we're talking about. When we're talking about this card costing seven is assuming the max exploit value uh, used. You don't need to exploit four. You can exploit one, two, three. You can pay more for this card if you want to lose less units. But if you want the max discount, you're going to be uh, ditching four of your four of your guys. Yeah, it's a good one. All right, time to uh, release the kraken. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. Uh, five for a two five. It is kraken confederate technician. Ca confederate tactician. I can't read today, man. Command villainy. When played, create two battle droid tokens on attack. Give each friendly token unit plus one, plus one for this phase. He's a separatist droid. I joked about ECLing him because then you just kind of like get this online and you get four, four worth of stats just chilling there, even though he's only ambushing in for two, obviously. Um, I still stand by that where I don't think that's the worst use of him ever. But even with ECL taken out of the equation, uh, this still seems like a pretty strong battle droid tribal card yeah it feels very strong there and uh, again can't help but point out the card we just looked at this creates two battle droid tokens so yep. if you play this um you know on a on a resource five or a resource six and then on the following turn you deploy your leader and you have that green base mm -hmm. now you've got four battle droid tokens and you can do the one-sided board wipe and you'd still have him and your leader because you just get rid of four droid tokens so uh the the go wide strategy is going to be i think very alive and well with this set and i'm excited for that i like it uh i and i worry though a little bit about things like vambrace flamethrower or uh something like even cad bane just pinging your tokens so there's answers out there but you oh, know sure. one is it one is a whole deck right one your opponent has to be playing cad bane the other one is a specific upgrade that, you know, might be sideboardable or so. But uh, there are already ways to deal with these 1-1 one -one tokens. Uh, that said, I mean, again, I'm, I'm hoping we have a deck that just floods the board with them quicker than your opponent can remove them in a lot of cases. And then you get to play this kind of stuff. It'll, it'll be neat. One of the cards that I thought was going to be a powerhouse in set one um, that just it didn't have the relevance it needed was Bombing Run, and that's a card oh, yeah. that I've been keeping my eye on as as we see more of this set. So great, great shout out! Yeah, Bombing Run is going to be pretty clutch because that takes out clones too. So, uh, and it's a non heroism or villainy card; it's just a single aggression yep. aspect. So, yeah, it's a good one to keep in mind. All right, all another right, big one this, for you. Uh, another exploit card so this is a separatist super tank a nine cost villainy command round unit eight eight in stats separatist vehicle tank which makes sense because it's a separatist super tank uh just says exploit three but of course i say just says as if that's not uh kind of crazy relevant because if you yep. do the max exploit then you would be staring at a three cost eight eight uh because this has uh separatist on it i imagine it's going to have some other relevance at some point but yeah that that feels kind of silly with all the tokens running around it is it is actually insane right that you could because it's not hard at all uh from what we've seen so far to generate three battle droids early on you know and so then just being able to on resource turn three or four very early in the game be able to just ditch three battle droids pay three for an eight eight and then just be like all right what are you gonna do about it and unless they have something like a fell the dragon uh this this unit is gonna do work it's just vanilla 8 8 essentially once you take the exploit out of it but man this is well, this is a one of the scariest commons i've seen in a while i think so i will say the the card that i immediately well i say card the leader that i immediately gravitate to with this is the new mall right because you say it's just a vanilla 8 8 but it's suddenly a lot more than that when you can give oh, it totally. overwhelm when you're attacking that is scary yeah very scary if you had some sort of mall deck that was more command focused and uh was all about generating a lot of tokens early on and doing the damage through overwhelm later when things like this came out that could actually really work that's that's kind of a deck i want to build now that now that you say that interesting scary though scary common again this is one where in limited this is going to be a card people are going to be looking for yeah hey it's echo he's back 
We get our He's second. Bad. We get our second echo card, and it's once again in command heroism. Interestingly enough, uh, two for a two-two valiant arc trooper, a, a slightly younger echo, republic clone, and trooper coordinate. This unit gets plus two plus two. So you could, if coordinate is online, be paying two for four four. I love this card because it's just twos across the board, right? It's two <laughs> yeah. for a two two coordinate plus two plus two his name is echo so it's you know the the second right and and yeah echo is uh you say something and then you hear it again right so it's on theme for his name it's also the second version of echo that we've had released in the game everything about him is twos um yep. whether he's good or not i don't care i love this card just because of how thematic they went with it he has three traits though ruined his three traits uh <laughs> and coordinate only turns on uh for three or more units yeah. but well you can only go you know, so I, far yeah yeah i i, I love this pass. kind of stuff though too I'm, I'm totally with you on this because this kind of reminds me of the old star wars ccg from like the late 90s early 2000s a little bit they would include a lot of fun kind of like humorous flavor in the cards and i feel like we're seeing that spirit be in this game too which i think is great if if you're like me and you played the old card game way way back when um, you get to, you know, see little shades of that, little nods to, I think, the the tongue-in-cheek style that that game had sometimes. So, I like that. Shout out to the devs for that. Moving on. Go ahead. Republic Tactical Officer. This is a two-cost ground unit. Heroism in Command. It is a 1-4. Has Republic and Clone traits. When played... You may attack with a Republic unit. It gets plus two, plus zero for this attack. So uh, I know it says officer, but I think we all know deep down in our hearts that his rank is lieutenant. Um, <laughs> I mean, he and, doesn't uh, have there's the, not much uh, more to say about that. Yeah, uh, he's kind <laughs> of he's kind of your uh, fleet lieutenant for uh, for well, Republic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so there is uh, you know the two lieutenants in set one that had. The symmetrical effects right yeah uh, one was the two two for two the other one was the three for the three three obviously he is two for a one four so he doesn't kind of continue that trend i personally would have loved if this was like a four for a four four. Oh my god um, but perhaps that would have Same. been uh you know too strong so nonetheless i just love that we we get that effect again it's still on an officer and kind of carries on in spirit yeah, it gives a really opens up uh, aggressive Republic deck options when you have a card like this in the card pool. So that'll be interesting to keep an eye on. Moving on to Shock T, another one of our Jedi. Uh, Unity wins wars. Uh, four for a three four command heroism. Each friendly token unit gets plus one plus zero on attack. Create a clone trooper token. Now clone trooper tokens to review are two twos. So. Uh, she would make those clone troopers three twos and it does say each friendly token unit it doesn't specify clones and so if you're generating battle droids for some reason those also get that buff but uh, she herself makes clone troopers when attacking so this is a, another one of those really really strong looking uncommons yeah i was gonna say i was shocked this was an uncommon yeah. when i saw it because it feels really strong and limited and it almost looks good enough to just be an entire build around for a deck in constructed uh, mm -hmm. as you rightfully pointed out it's just token unit so droids and clones get the benefit it's in command so whether you're running uh energy conversion lab or whether you are using stuff like timely intervention there's lots of ways to ambush her in uh, she could also pair with somebody like Fennec because she costs four. So she's hitting that threshold uh, on the ambush. Obviously, you get to create the clone trooper right away, which is relevant. I also love that this is kind of future proof, right? This is going to be our first set ever with tokens, but I can't imagine they're going to do it for one set and never do it again. Oh, totally. So as other sets pop up, um, this could be very, very relevant for other tokens as well. I I think this is a, a very strong card for an uncommon because it checks a lot of boxes for me. The, the only downside is really the stats for the cost, right? A 3-4 four for 4 is a bit understated, but that ha had to be the case because everything about this card is outstanding. Yeah, and I mean, this is another card that you can use force events on. 
that are very good. Obviously, in the past, you can put like a Jedi lightsaber on her or something like that. So even though she has a slightly lower stat line, she can receive some of the strongest permanent buffs in the game, too, just by being yep. a force unit. So that, to me, <laughs> makes up for it as well. It, or if you've been watching our Conquer the Cave series, uh, activate force throw. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Force throw, pretty strong card. Yep. Watch that conquer the cave. All right. Tell us about the ship. Helta Supply Frigate. This is a five cost space unit, command and heroism. Has a three six stat line. It is a Republic vehicle, but also a capital ship. And it has coordinate when played, create a clone trooper token. So. Uh, a bit of a win more card on the surface, right? You already have to have some units in play. Um, this is going to count when it enters for the coordinate. So if you have two units, it will still trigger and give you that clone uh, trooper token. But uh, a three six out in space isn't bad for five. Giving you an additional presence on the ground, I think, is also relevant. Anytime that you can apply pressure in both arenas, I think it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, this is a common, so I expect this to have the most impact in limited where you are kind of looking for uh probably a bit more quantity over quality um but it gets the job done yeah i i wonder if we're looking at a heavy clone trooper token deck like thinking about shakti who we just checked out uh you know you have her out you have another clone or two you play this on your resource turn five you've got a big body in space three six is nothing to laugh at stats wise in space you put another clone trooper on the ground it's it's just uh you know you say win more but it comes early enough in the game that it could be kind of like a secure the win kind of card too so so i don't know i think it'll be good and limited but i could maybe see this sneaking into some constructed lists as well some premier lists we should say because i think it it pairs very well into what the clone deck is trying to do yeah i i think the main reason that i was considering it a win more is because this can enable some very powerful things like you said um, I think that what you listed is actually the best example, right? If you imagine, especially in Constructed, on resource turn four, you have uh, ambushed in your shock T so that you get her and the clone trooper. Even if you don't have any other units, you get her in the clone trooper. Mm -hmm. And then on the following turn, when you play this, now coordinates active, so you get two more. That's strong. But I would argue, personally, that that's partially because shock T is so powerful and that this is just following up on it, right? I think that you're sure. going to do something powerful and then follow up with this. Um, so that was, I guess, the only reason why I was thinking win more. It's more of a a support your plan as opposed to enable your plan kind of card. Yeah, and decks need those cards too. You know, it's kind oh, of like, sure. yeah, it's like the it's like the uh, you know super move at the end of a combo, right? Where it's yeah. like it's just uh, sending it home, right? It's just making that last hit really memorable. But I just like big ships. You know me. I'm like next <laughs> expansion, man. Jump the light speed. It's it's got to be all about ships. I'm so I'm so excited for that one. That's gonna be awesome. And so whenever I see a ship, I get happy. Let's move on. Manufactured soldiers. It's a double aspect card and double cunning costs three. Supply is the trait for um, this event. Uh, what's that? Uh, oh, double command. command. I yeah. just yeah for the audio command, listeners. Yeah. No, you said double cunning. And I was like, Did I? Uh, I thought I said yeah, double command. Okay. Oh my gosh, what's wrong with me today? Listen, double we're command. we're both feeling it. We're this this is a two man show for a reason. We have to make up for each other. <laughs> I'm just constantly tired. Uh choose one. Create two clone trooper tokens, create three <laughs> battle droid tokens. So depending on if you're playing double command, uh on the villainy side or the vigilant side, you can create something that synergizes well. Or if you just simply want the numbers, you can go for battle droids. Uh, it's it's interesting. I, I like the versatility of it. I love double command stuff. Uh, so it's a, a cool addition to that arsenal. I think that this is a card that in limited, because it's an uncommon, uh, I could see a lot of people just paying the tax for and still paying five because whether you choose yeah, sure. the trooper tokens or the battle droid, you are turning on coordinate for anything else on the board, right? The two clone trooper tokens plus your unit with coordinate equals three. Uh, I like the versatility because in a, in a draft scenario, because this doesn't have heroism or vigilance, um, if you are going clone trooper focused and you have that synergy, you could choose that option or you could select it if you're more on the battle droid side. And then as you yeah. pointed out, uh, clone trooper tokens, more stats, obviously it's two, two, twos, but a little less resilient because there is less of them. 
or you can go wider with the battle droid tokens um or uh you could do this as a setup play for a big exploit play as well if you want to choose those battle droid tokens so um a lot of really interesting applications to this beyond the fact that you just get board presence yeah you want to play that super tank and it's a uh, resource turn six and you're playing double command play this choose three battle droids then exploit them and pay three for an eight eight so there's uh there's some fun stuff i think you can do with it and i i think you're absolutely right too that this is a, definitely a card you could run uh outside of double command decks because uh you know just case in point look at attack pattern delta uh I've been running that in uh, in a couple decks off aspect, and man, getting six six of stats for five, easily worth it. That card is like definitely worth five resources, and I think this is one of those cards too that that could be that way in the right deck. So definitely something to not write off just because you're not running double green. Hey, speaking of things that you should not write off, the five oh first liberator. This is a three cost ground unit that is just command so it can go both ways has a 3-3 stat line republic clone and trooper traits when played if you control another republic unit you may heal three damage from a base and this is a common this yeah. card i think is wild uh we've already seen a lot of republic stuff in this set uh command historically has in my opinion, anyway, it's been a bit behind Vigilance on the healing. It's always had access to healing, but it's usually conditional. It's like a Consortium Star Viper, where right. it's restore, but it's also conditional restore where you need initiative. Um, or it's small chunks. It might be like a Colonel Yalaran or a Salacious Crumb. Uh, this is just straight up, like, if you're on theme, I get a 3-3 three, three for 3, and I heal 3 from my base right now. Uh, that is very, very crucial, and I I think that this card will find a home for sure. There's a ton of Republic stuff in this set, so I you know, and again I'm thinking sealed. I'm thinking limited. This card is going to be so good if you have a deck with a good amount of Republic stuff, which is not going to be that hard to do. I think. Oh, I I you know I've been at drafts where I've seen uh, Tyler Parrot, for example, take like five Echo Base Defenders. Um, right. I'm kind of. Um, afraid of any draft where somebody ends up with like six of these mm -hmm. where they they play the first one with some other republic unit but then because this also is republic they just keep playing them over and over and over again uh yep heal your base to full heal your base to full it's uh potentially scary card to yeah watch that out 24 for. health base doesn't seem so bad anymore when you can continually peel tokens off it in in theory you're you're not wrong we'll see what happens with that We'll see what happens with this, too. It's Gore, Grievous's pet. I don't know where this guy comes from in the lore. Maybe it's a, a cartoon thing. Maybe it's a comic thing. I'm not sure. But it's uh, Command Legendary, our third legendary that we've seen revealed. Cost 12 is 7-7 seven, seven in stats. It does have Exploit 3, Sentinel, Ambush, and Overwhelm. So if you Exploit 3, it comes down to 6. So you're paying 6 for a 7-7 seven, seven with Sentinel, Ambush, and Overwhelm. That sounds pretty good. Again, uh, it's connected to Grievous, so it's connected to decks where you could theoretically have a lot of battle droids out to satisfy the exploit for Gore. This is another one of those cards where it's like, in a in a deck that creates a lot of things you're going to exploit, I think this might be, might be in there. Looks pretty decent. Yeah, I was trying to do a, a quick Google because I, you know, you said you didn't remember where Gore came from. I feel like... Um... And I'm sure we'll figure it out once we're done recording. But uh, I feel like this came from a video game originally. I'm looking it up right now. Um, let's see. Like that's what I remember it from. Um, yeah. Because it's definitely in like the Lego Star Wars that Monroe has played. Um, oh, I, I have in, seen that. It, apparently, it is in the Clone Wars show. Okay. Yeah. In the final season, apparently. It's, a, it's an episode called Lair of Grievous. No, oh, well, there you go. That, that tracks. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I know for sure that I remember him from Lego Star Wars of all places. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, we, the, the, you know, are there any, well, are there any specifically Lego Star Wars characters? Unless you look at the, uh, what is it, I, Rebuild the Galaxy thing or something that's coming out? Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, Either way, this I card just, looks I, solid. I, it looks like a solid legendary. Yeah. It, it definitely has uh 
it's eye-opening because you look at the text box and it's just four bright red words right so it has that kind of gravitas of like it it does all the things um i know that we're obviously a, a star wars unlimited podcast but if you've played other games in the past this reminds me of um like this game's a chroma archangel sure, right when a chroma yeah. first came out i'm also probably dating myself but like when that first came out <laughs> i um, remember it was like a it was a big deal because it was just like an angel with a ton of keywords um spirit of the night actually predates that and was pretty similar as well but mm. yeah it's just it it's good because it does all the things and it is also potentially pretty cheap to play if you do the full exploit three yeah i mean paying six for this seems pretty solid and again it doesn't seem like it'll be that tough to get those battle droids out and you know we we ha we can't keep saying we can't keep pretending that it's like only the tokens you'd want to exploit for stuff like this because you're going to have a lot of situations too where you have a unit that's got like one health left it's almost dead it's going to die it, it doesn't have a ton of uh power so it's just kind of sitting there and so those are going to be prime targets for exploit as well we have to think about that too that's not just going to be the tokens that are going to get exploited here we we also have to think about um Anything that has relevant when defeated effects. Yeah, absolutely. Because sometimes yeah. you do want to trigger it. So, you know, earlier I had mentioned that I just really like that new wartime official because he has the official trait and he's kind of sticky, but he also replaces himself when defeated. He is a great exploit enabler because, mm -hmm. you know, you can play him on your opening turn, maybe even swing with him. And then if your point, uh, opponent ignores him because he's just a 1 3, suddenly he's powering on your exploit and then you still get the battle droid after the fact and you got to swing with him right so anything with a relevant when defeated um that's important exploit also you know in instances where your opponent might have tried to traditionally prevent you from triggering your own when defeated so if you've ever played against a k2so sometimes you know he's about to crash into something to die on purpose so you exhaust him right mm -hmm. exploit when this set comes out is going to open up a lot of strategies for your plays like that yeah absolutely it, it is exciting thinking about the rules interactions that would occur there i believe you would be announcing that you're playing the card you come out you'd pay whatever amount of exploit costs you have right because that's the second part of it is pay costs and then as those costs are paid, the when defeated triggers would sort of happen within that window. And then potentially, you know, you could like buff gore or put a shield on gore if the when defeated, uh, you know, gave a shield to something just for a, an example in theory. And then you could choose to, you know, activate the ambush after that. So he could be ambushing in with a shield or ambush and then put the shield. It's, it's, uh, it's interesting. Well, actually, the when defeated yeah. come before the other stuff, right? Because it'd be part of paying costs. I'd have to go and look that up. Things are going to get a little bit tricky when it comes to when defeated's within exploit payments. But that sounds to me how that would go. But we'll look that up. Either way, I'm sure you can do some fun Either way, stuff it's with exciting. exploit and when defeated. Yeah, for sure. Wow. That's an important hey. card. There you go. <laughs> hey, it's a, yeah, I was going to say, it's a card that has a a relevant title and if spark of rebellion has taught me anything it means those cards are usually pretty good so yeah um this card is the clone wars it is a two cost event in just the command aspect and it has the sub trait of disaster which i just chuckle at every time i think about it but uh pay any number of resources now keep in mind that's after you've paid the two for this right you pay the cost of this and then it's pay any number of resources and then you create that many clone trooper tokens each opponent creates that many battle droid tokens so you get the theoretical benefit of you get a bunch of two twos they get a bunch of one ones but i love this card so much because not only does it turn on coordinate it turns on exploit and it's each opponent so when i saw that i was like this is going in every twin suns deck i run that has command in it because it's just fun right like i just yeah. want to cause chaos yeah, it, do, it does look like it's a lot of fun. It's funny that this is our second uh, card now where Disaster is uh, one of the traits. The first one was Super Laser Blast back in set one. That is a disaster and tactic for its traits. But here yeah. comes the Clone Wars. I, I like that there's there's parody there, right? Where it's like you're making clone troopers, your opponent's making battle droids, you have the you know the strength value of your 2-2s two versus their 1-1s, one -ones, but... There's a lot of risk involved with this card, but I, I just like the chaos that uh, it could potentially create with it. I also, just really quickly about the art, 
I I love that when, you know, Samuel L. Jackson was asked about the purple lightsaber and whatever, and he said, I want to be seen in the big battles. Like, that's one of the reasons he requested it. Yeah. In this art, it is the massive ground battle, but he's front and center, and you notice him because he has that purple lightsaber. Yeah, he's easy to spot. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's move on to a uh, our aggression cards. We're kind of going in order of aspect, more or less. That's just how the... Folder was sorted when I imported it into OBS. Uh, two for a uh, two, 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 one, rather. Two for two, one. Aggression, villainy, uh, Um series officer, zero, zero, M. Whenever I see, I hear Um, I think out of mana. I think World of Warcraft. Zero, zero, M series officer. Yeah. When defeated, deal two damage to a base. So I, I love this. It's just a simple, aggressive uh unit you can just plunk it down on turn one trade into it attack a base you know at some point you're going to do two damage to a base but i know what you're thinking charmer also a prime target for exploit because as you're paying for something else by exploiting this card you're also doing damage to their base uh it's i think it's a it really typifies the whole concept of the disposable troops right the battle droids i love it yeah i you, you read my mind, right? I love this for exploit and very specifically in aggressive uh, exploit decks because yeah. I'm a big Asajj Ventures fan. I was very excited when I saw her. So every time I see things that I could potentially pair with her as I want to you know, build a deck that she's in, uh, this is a prime candidate, right? You can play it on the opening turn and your opponent in many ways is faced with a, a bit of a decision. You don't want to take damage on your base, but you also don't want to like leave this around either, but it just feels... I don't know, kind of clunky or awkward to want to deal with a 2-1 because yeah. it's not very threatening on its own, but it also does so many other things. So um, I, I like this card. It's uh, it's the Leopard Gnome Dilemma from Hearthstone. If you remember that way back when yep. it was, uh, which I believe was also a 2-1, that when it died, it did two damage to your, your hero, which is essentially your base in that game. And so the dilemma was, I don't want to take that two damage, but if I, the more... I let this thing sit there, the more it's just going to hit me for two. So it really kind of demands a response right away in a way that a two, one wouldn't normally demand a response. So it just, it really, this kind of card just really messes with your opponent, which is uh, why I like it. Uh, I will say I'm a little bit surprised that it doesn't have the trooper tag. It only has separatist and droid. Um, but well, I think the it's idea an is... officer, sir. <laughs> oh, you're right. But officers can be troopers. Why can't officers be troopers? I mean, sure, they can, but. I'm just saying he's got that uh, orange on on his droid build there. You got to sure. put some respect on his name. I'm just a little bit surprised. That's all. I, I feel like uh, his experience and his title would afford him the title trooper as well. <laughs> but to take it up with FFG, I guess. Moving on. All right. Here's another card that I love. This is Confederate Tri Fighter, and oh, it man. is trying hard to prevent your opponent from healing. So this is a three cost base unit. In Villainy and Aggression, has a 3-3 stat line, has a ton of traits. Separatist, Droid, Vehicle, Fighter. And the only text in the text box is, Bases Can't Be Healed. Uh, as somebody who's played a lot of Wolf in my sideboard, for obvious reasons, this is a welcome addition. Uh, anytime you have additional space presence, I think that that's a good thing. But also... You don't have to do the when played, when attacking thing that Wolf mm -hmm. does. This is just flat out, hey, if I'm out there roaming around in space, nobody's healing bases. Yeah, uh, for the villainy side of things, this is just a better Wolf. You know, it's just the effect that doesn't get turned off. Sure, he costs one more, but who cares, right? I mean, you're not going to be trying to play this as fast as you can, right? You don't usually play Wolf as fast as you can. You usually wait for a turn that you you know need to turn off healing, and then you do that, right? Unless he's like your only turn one play or something. So I think wow. this fits in very smoothly in the three resource uh, sort of uh, era, right, during a game, because that's going to be when base healing starts to become a little bit more relevant. So, yeah, I think it's just a great uh, villainy, better wolf, you know? I was going to say, you could also take the why not both approach, and then maybe you can sure. be more cavalier. Yeah, so you, you are could. correct. In the past, I've definitely held on to my wolf for key turns or clutch plays. But if you know that your deck has access to six things that are preventing healing, you also could be a, a bit more uh, flexible with your game plan. Because sometimes preventing that kind of like incidental or accidental healing can be really important. Totally. Um, 
I, I just like this card. It's been something aggression has needed for a while, in my opinion. Yeah, it's including a lot of anti-healing, you know, can be relevant at that stage in the game if you're playing against like a Ray or a deck that's running Yoda or something like that or an early Yularen or something. Hayden. Yeah, it could uh, it could end up being pretty good to that because right now in Star Wars Unlimited, healing is pretty strong. We'll put that <laughs> out there. It's a pretty good, uh, pretty good ability. So I like I like the answer here. All right, moving on with the droids. Three for a 5-2. It's a B1 attack platform. Aggression and villainy. Separatist droid trooper. This one's a trooper, even though it's not trooping at all. It's flying around. See? It's not an officer. So what? Can't, why can't officers be troopers? Because tr troopers are the people... Oh, this is this is going to sound bad. I don't know if I want to say it. Troopers are the people that are uh, expendable and exploitable oh gosh, is the way I that I'm going to say that. I can't Listen, believe you I'm, said I'm that. putting on my empire hat. Okay. And, oh, I was going to say <laughs> something else, but uh, troopers are the, you know, exploitable things for for the empire, right? Yeah, so well, that's why it's storm troopers, not storm officers. Well, this is an empire. This is separatist, first of all. Yeah. Second, second yeah. of all, second of all, I'm taking it very literally where the uh, the officer troops is that it walks around. It walks in combat next to its fellow soldiers, whereas this trooper doesn't walk at all. It just flies. It flies on the little, yeah. you know, the little uh, Segway with guns, you know? Maybe this is the droid version of a paratrooper, though. Maybe he jumped out of a low orbit uh, well, you know, vehicle and has glided down and that that platform is really his parachute and he's a paratrooper. So you're saying that he will eventually get off of this thing because the nature of a paratrooper is to jump for the purpose of then trooping once the jump is over. Whereas uh, I don't think these guys yeah. get off their uh, I get think, off their I think he'll get platform. down. It, it looks like he's in a swamp on the art and he just doesn't want to get his feet dirty at the moment. Yeah, but he'll well, get down eventually. I don't know. You, tell us in the comments. Do you do you think this is a, an appropriate use of the t of the trait trooper? <laughs> Either way, it's gonna be it's gonna be good in game. Talking about it in a game context for for once, I guess three for a five two. It's a lot of damage. I'm thinking about this, and you know, again, Maul. If it survives, if it gets to attack into a unit, you know, you're gonna get that overwhelm benefit uh, with the Maul leader traits. So that's something to consider. I think it's a card that will trade great in a limited environment. Um, so maybe not something you'll see in in quite as many uh, premier decks, but I think in limited, this thing could shine. Yeah, I think that limited, it makes sense. I could also see very specific decks that might want to include it for. You know whether you're using this in combination with ambush then it mm -hmm. becomes a very efficient removal right um sure we have open fire which is normally like pay three to deal four to a unit this kind of ups that up to five if you're pairing it with some sort of ambush uh effect i could also see if you are uh, maybe paired with vigilance and you have the ability to easily give this shields i think that that could be relevant because suddenly a five attack power unit with shields becomes pretty annoying um I don't know. I think that there's hope, but I do think it'll be a limited star. Being a common and uh, forcing your opponent to have to keep attacking and do things with five attack power seems pretty good. Fair enough. All right. All right. This next card is Squadron of Vultures, but no, it is not the birds. These are the <laughs> space units, those uh, droids that uh, kind of walk around on all fours from, you know, episode one and so forth. So, uh, Squadron of Vultures is a six cost space unit in villainy and aggression, has a 5 4 stat line, again, has the trait soup of separatist droid vehicle fighter, and has exploit three. Yeah, so that means you could bring it down to uh, a cost of zero. zero. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, if you exploit things, which I think is great. You want to convert some of your battle droids on the ground into a 5 4 in space? Here's a great way to do it. Yeah, ditch uh, three of your battle droids in, in uh, the ground arena. Suddenly there's a 5-4 for free up there. Suddenly you've got, you know, resources yet to spend on your turn. So this just seems like a, a strong, kind of scary 5-4 you can just throw up in space. And then looking at the traits, there's going to be a lot of things that could potentially synergize with this. So, yeah, seems like a pretty good common. Yeah, I think that covers it. Yeah. Savage Oppress. It's not Savage. I've been told it's pronounced Savage. It's, it's Savage Operas. It's Savage. Again, I'm I'm doing the Key Adi Monday. 
uh, purposeful oppressed. pronunciation slaughter. You are correct. It is normally savage. Is it a perfume? No, it's Darth Maul's brother. For seven, for a seven, seven, it is aggression, villainy, force, night, underworld. When played, if you control fewer units, including this one, than an opponent, ready this unit. So uh, it could be very tricky. Play it at the right time, get a readied seven, seven. I'm very curious, though, Charmer, about the night trait. That, uh, that I, I mean, I know, didn't he have some connection with like the, the Night Sisters in the Clone Wars or something? I watched those episodes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that is, uh, I think, the precursor to signaling that we are going to get like Night Sisters, which That's is a Dathomir, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, which I think is very, very cool. Uh, it is also worth pointing out for our audio listeners when we say night, we mean like, you know, it's dark outside, not Jedi Knight. Um, so yeah, Night Sisters, that sort of thing. Uh, this card, I think, is actually pretty good and limited being an uncommon. It's a good top end because oh, totally. being able to surprise somebody and, and swing for seven could be a pretty big deal, especially, you know, in an aggressive deck. Uh, a lot of times when your opponent is trying to stabilize and turn the corner, they're going to have more units than you, right? They are trying to attack your units to establish board control while you've been attacking their base. And so they should have a, a greater presence and then you just mm -hmm. drop this. And if they don't have the immediate answer, then it's seven damage. Um, if they have a Sentinel and it's getting in your way, well, the good news is uh, this is pairing very well with the Darth Maul leader because you could just turn around and give him overwhelm. So I do love that, you know, the, the family ties are also present there. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Either way, I think uh, I think your shout out that it's going to be a strong limited card as an uncommon. You're going to see it pretty frequently. I think that's the the biggest thing that jumps out to me. Yep, We've got so many agree. cards to talk about. Let's move on. Uh, talk about Batch Brothers. Uh, this one's pretty straightforward, but I dig it. Uh, three cost ground unit. It is heroism and aggression. Two one stat line Republic clone trooper. But when played, create a clone trooper token. So. A lot of times in this game, we pay three to get a four, three in stats. That is still happening here, but it's split across two units, and that's pretty relevant for this set. Yeah, I mean, coordinate is obviously a consideration here, and then just having more units to benefit from a blanket buffing ability that say, like, give plus one to everything or whatever, you know, that, that applies here too. So I think it's just going to be a strong, uh, you know, early game card for those uh, those heroism clone decks that we're going to see you know green red seems like a, a real potential clone sort of like aspect combination based on what we've seen so far and this would probably fit right in there all right low altitude gunship interesting so it's a republic <laughs> vehicle transport it is a ship but it's a ground unit uniquely enough Six for a six five, it's aggression and heroism. Republic vehicle transport, as I said, has overwhelm. And when played, choose an enemy unit, deal one damage to it for each friendly Republic unit. Uh that is uh that is very interesting. It's like uh it's like Big Akbar or something like that, you know? Yeah, the, this is like back breaking Akbar, back bra, if back, you will, Akbar. whatever you want to call bar. it. That was, his, bar. that was sure. his wrestling name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this it, It's an uncommon, so it's going to be really strong and limited. Yeah. Uh, if there's any sort of Tribal Republic deck, I would expect this to be played there as well. Totally. It is a body. It is something that is removal, and it's got that kind of evasion with the overwhelm. It just checks a lot of boxes. It's, it's good for what it needs to do. It seems like one of those very, very good for an uncommon. Like, I look at this card, and I'm like, I, could, I wouldn't be surprised if this was a rare. Like if you told me if you told me about this card and told me it was rare, I'd be like, yeah, it sounds rare because it's essentially a big well set of body, a removal card, and it has a trait that's relevant. Yeah. Uh, so it's yeah, very strong. A lot of strong un, strong uncommons in the set so far. All right, the next uh, unit that we're going to talk about here is Relentless Rocket Droid. This is oh, a yeah. four cost ground unit. It is just the aggression uh, aspect is a three five stat line it is a separatist droid trooper trooper there so must not be an officer <laughs> <laughs> sure. uh while you control another trooper unit this gets plus two plus zero so uh, if you are building into a a trooper style deck this is essentially a four cost five five uh that seems pretty good for a common yeah and the funny thing is because this is only aggression 
you could put it into one of your aggressive uh, clone decks as well because a lot of the clones have the trooper trait. So you could also be playing a four for a five five in your you know heroism clone centric kind of deck. There there is a little bit of crossover here where there's maybe a couple clones that could work well on the villainy side on the the droid centric decks. And this is one of the droids I think that could work well in a clone centric deck uh, by virtue of that uh, trooper trait interaction. Interesting stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're talking about uh, the clone trooper stuff, but I'm even thinking all the way back to set one when we had, yeah, maybe. Um, you know, some some Leia. of those troopers. Because I, I think about our ardent sympathizer, right? The yeah. uh, oh no, there I go murdering again. But even cards like um, partisan insurgent that I've always been a huge fan of, right? Because it has both the rebel and the trooper tags, and is just aggression as well. And uh, they turn each other on, right? This sees another trooper, and then Insurgent sees another red unit. So, uh, yeah, it's it's got a, a lot of potential pairings through all the sets, in my opinion. Yeah, it's going to be one of those kind of evergreen cards that you'll always have to think about if you're building a, a deck with a lot of troopers. Ooh, it's heavy. Staunch Martyr. Four for a four seven only aggression Republic cr uh, clone trooper coordinate raid two. So when you have coordinate, it gains raid two, and when defeated, deal one damage to each enemy ground unit. So uh, yeah, it goes out in a blaze of glory that takes out of the clones. I'm told that's lore relevant, uh, and and here we have uh, the cards. So it looks like another very very good uncommon, frankly. Yeah, you said uh, take out the clones. I think it's meant oh, to take uh, out the battle droids, battle droids, not, not clones. Right? Yeah, because yeah, they're one clones. ones. So yeah, heavy air four for a four four. Um, I I like that they made him just aggression though. Right, this very easily could have been an aggression and heroism unit in my mind, but I like that he's he's just aggression four for a four four, but has all the relevant stuff. And yeah. Uh, the when when defeated the interesting thing here is with the raid too. I think you want to be aggressive with him in attack base. And then your opponent's like, well, I, I don't want to deal with that, so I'm going to have to attack into them. But then they have to do so in a way where they're going to mitigate that one damage to all of their own ground units as well. Right. And it's not non-leader ground units. So even your leader is vulnerable to that one damage. So be afraid. Be very afraid. Next. Grenade Strike. Two-cost event. It is a tactic, and it is just aggression. Deal two damage to a unit. You may deal one damage to another unit in the same arena. So just nice and thematic, right? It's, uh, yeah. it's a removal with splash damage. Yeah, exactly. I love this card. Uh, I think it's a great little uh, damage card. Um, yeah, I don't really have a whole lot more to add. Uh, you get a lot of value for two resources when it comes down to it. Good little board control. Kind of like a mini bombing run in a way. Again, kills battle droids. I love that the art tells you exactly what that card's supposed to do, which is you take out a clone trooper and a battle droid, right? Like that's Pretty much, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, he's looking at the grenade like, well, you know, I guess, uh, I, guess I can't be on the card called Heroic Sacrifice, so I'm going to do my own version. Moving on to Cunning now. We're going to talk about the soulless one customized for Grievous. I feel like that's a that's a motto of uh, you know some sort of like bespoke shop that only caters to General Grievous. Come to yeah, the probably. they they probably made his uh, death wheel thing too. Uh, cost one for a one two cunning villainy separatist vehicle fighter. It is unique. On attack, you may exhaust a friendly droid unit or General Grievous leader or unit. If you do, this unit gets plus two plus zero for this attack. Interesting. Yeah, this is this is kind of crazy because it's the first time we've seen something where on a card we can exhaust our leader. Uh, we've seen things that care about whether your leader matches, but you can exhaust the leader and that leader has its mm -hmm. own exhaust mechanic, right? So this card creates that choice for you. Do I want to use Grievous for his leader ability or do I want to use it to power up the ship? And creating that kind of decision tree, I think, is just really good design. Yeah, I agree. It's it's thematic. It's going to be fun to play around. Another way to use those tokens. Pretty cool. Moving right along, though. We got we to gotta speed up. Uh, go ahead. Tell us about Rush. Rush Clovis. Rush. Four cost. Yeah, we got to rush. We got to rush. Uh, four cost ground unit. Uh, cunning and villainy. This is a 3-5. Separatist and official. Has raid two. 
On attack, if the defending player controls no ready resources, create a battle droid token. Uh, this is this is kind of crazy. It's just a ton of stats. It makes units, has relevant traits. This is, I, I think, just solid all the way around. I think it's a it's a really, really neat uh, card because it's thematic, right? Uh, you're messing with your opponent's resources, appropriate for a banking clan scion. Uh, like you said, it's got great stats. The raid two, it's a uh, it's a neat card. I think it's gonna definitely find a home in uh, a decent amount of cunning decks. It doesn't necessarily have uh, you know it doesn't have the underworld trait things like that that make it you know oh I'm just gonna put this in Cad Bane, but I think just in general this is like a supplementary card you could see going into like a general grievous deck right. It supports uh, what that deck is trying to do and really kind of makes your opponent think differently about how they're gonna spend their resources. So very interesting card. All right, let's talk about the Tactical Droid Commander. Five for a 4-4, four, four, Separatist Droid, Cunning Villainy, Exploit 2, so you could theoretically bring it out for just one resource. When you play another Separatist unit, you may exhaust a unit that costs the same as or less than the played unit. So uh, kind of like a Robothron in, in a way, where uh, you're going to be able to, down the road, you know, later a little bit later in the game when this comes out, use it to theoretically exhaust, you know, the right thing at the right time and... Yeah, I don't know. It's a. It seems okay. Um, the exploit I think helps a lot. Just being able to play a four four for a lot cheaper makes it appealing. And then the other part of the card feels like a situational bonus that you won't count on if you're using this card. But it'll be nice if it happens, you know. Yeah, the other part of this card just reminds me a lot of Tobias from Shadows sure. of the Galaxy, where it, you're playing a separatist unit instead of an event, but otherwise, same same concept. Yeah, pretty much. Need to see. Let's go on to the next one. It's another hut. <laughs> we get a we get a hut. It's zero the hut. Five cost ground unit. Again, villainy and cunning. Has a two eight stat line, underworld and hut traits. When played, for each opponent, you may exhaust a unit that player controls. Uh, I already love it for twin sons. On attack, for each opponent, you may exhaust a resource that player controls. Yeah. I mean, it's just a. Uh... It, it follows the hut theme of just being kind of neat, unique abilities to that character individually. Maybe we'll have a hut deck eventually. Um, I look at this and I'm like, you know, I, I would potentially put this in Cad Bane. It is Underworld, so it does activate the leader ability. But it does also just kind of mess with your opponent's cards. And uh, Cad Bane, I feel like, kind of needs that sometimes. He needs that sort of, like, interference with your opponent's units on board or resources to sort of help you... Uh, maintain your momentum in the the mid to late game, so it might be a decent addition to uh, some Cad Bane lists. I'm I'm curious about this card. Uh, the original Job of the Hut didn't end up finding his way in a lot of lists. Uh, will this Hut do better? Yeah, um, at least in Twin Suns, I'll play it there because it's fun. <laughs> yeah, at the very least. All right, moving on to an event from Cunning Cunning Villainy event. Uh, costs one. It's called Wartime Profiteering. It is a supply. Look at the cards from the top of your deck equal to the number of units that were defeated this phase. Draw one and put the others on the bottom of your deck in a random order. So this is a card that, again, really wants to take advantage of things like exploit. Uh, on a turn where you know you're paying less for something, you're defeating a lot of things on your side, maybe one or two things go on your opponent's side. You could end up going pretty deep into your deck with this card at the if you play at the right time. Yeah, the only uh, things that I would point out about this is first, it is just units that were defeated. Doesn't even have to be your own. So right. uh, that super relevant. But also, you just get to draw any card. This is the, the closest we've had to a tutor outside of the one from set one that costs four, obviously. Um, the fact that this costs one and, and can just let you find whatever you need means that I think this might actually find a home. Um, it's I, it's hmm. the surface pretty good. I don't know if I'd put this in a deck that uh, I didn't know was going to be guaranteeing me a turn where I was going to lose three, four units or something like that. Because if you're only searching the top two or top three, it, it doesn't seem like it's worth a spot in a deck to me. Um, but like I said, if you're focusing on a lot of exploit on your side, you know, then then I could see it being like, all right, I'm going to pretty regularly get use out of this. Uh, but this card is right on the edge. I think it has it is conditionally very good. 
but only like, you know, 30, 20% of the time, unless you have a deck that's very built around making it work. It also, because it's such a cheap event and it's in cunning, could care for any of your decks where you want to play a bunch of events and get those triggers, right? That could be. Another thing to consider. I don't know. I'm going to try to find a home for it. I, th I feel like that it's got legs and I like tutor effects. I think it's a neat card. Um, I don't, I'm going to predict that it's not going to end up having a lot of staying power except in like very specific decks, uh, but we'll see. Ooh, creepy. All right. So uh, we were talking about Spider Mall. Uh, <laughs> Unnatural Life. This is a three cost event, has the force trait as villainy and cunning aspects, play a unit that was defeated this phase from your discard pile. It costs two less and enters play ready at the start of the regroup phase, defeat it. So uh, essentially this is your sneak attack, but instead of from hand, it's something that was just defeated. Yeah, and, and that can be relevant too when it comes to specific when played or when defeated or uh, on attacks. So this is a pretty decently versatile card to bring back something, um, you know, cheaper that, you know, you want to, I mean, what if you uh, use it to, this is a bad example, but just bring back Greedo, having a chance to attack in for three and do, you know, is when defeated again, maybe roll the dice better this time uh, with revealing an event. Uh, you know, again, it, you'll kind of lose out on some of the cost reduction there, but that's just an example, right? Where you can bring something back and have a relevant effect from it. So I, I like it. I think it's a neat card. I think being, th costing three might be, might make it a little bit prohibitive for people to put it in a lot of decks, but I this is just, also a card that feels like it's you can almost break it, right? You're going to create yeah. some of the strongest scenarios in the game if you can find a way to make it work consistently. I was going to say, I'm just happy that it's in Villainy because the last thing I need is somebody like destroying their K2SO and then replaying their K2SO and then also having it get destroyed again at the end of the turn. Like, yeah. Or, uh, yeah. or their Luke or their Obi Wan, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But let's uh, you know if you think about uh, other units that are on the more expensive side that you could use this in tandem with later in the game. There's things like the Darth Vader from set one, right? Being able to ambush mm -hmm. in and play something three, you know, three costs worth of villainy from your deck. Uh, you get a couple attacks. You almost get like a little mini U wing reinforcement out of it. Uh, and that's there's a lot of other things like that, you know. So I like it. I think it's going to be a neat card. All right. We've got uh, our second R2-D2. Check that out. Uh, in Cunning this time, instead of just Heroism, Heroism Cunning, two for a 2-4. So he's gained a little bit of power since his uh, Spark of Rebellion version. When played, you may discard a card from your hand. If you do, search the top three cards of your deck for a card and draw it. Uh, that is an extremely powerful effect. Uh, being able to cycle a card like that, uh, a lot of times you'll see a discard one, draw one type thing. This is search the top three cards, and you can only do it once when it's played, but man, I think this card is really good. I mean, you say you can only do it once, but if I am hitting this thing with like my Bright Hope and then replaying it, yeah. I'm drawing a lot of cards, right? Because you're going to draw for the for Bright sure. Hope and then draw when you replay this. I... I think this does a lot of work. Uh, I also just really adore that Ray can still buff this one as well. <laughs> yep, there is that. It's funny because this is a, a chronologically older R2 than the R2 in Spark of Rebellion. So the argument there, I guess, is that uh, the R2-D2 in Spark of Rebellion in the Galactic Civil War era was a little bit more beat up, a little bit weaker, never used as jet legs that we saw in Revenge need... of the Sith. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so 1-4 instead of 2-4. But great card. I think it's going to end up in a lot of decks. I'm excited to play it. I like the art on it, too. I think that's a, a great little image of R2. Hey, it's all you. Sabine! <laughs> Sabine! Finally, another Sabine! All right, so uh, four-cost ground Finally, unit. Finally, you've got two already. You've got hey, two look, Sabines already. I need all the Sabines. <laughs> I need one for every hair color. I need I every so. whatever. Um, four-cost ground unit, heroism, and cunning. 4-4 uh, four, four, Fringe Mandalorian Spectre. While this unit is exhausted, she cannot be attacked unless she gains Sentinel. On attack, you may discard a card from your deck. If it does not share an aspect with your base, deal 2 damage to a ground unit. Um, 
I just really like that there's a lot of crossover with this card and Ezra, um, because obviously they're like BFFs. Both of them care about the top card of your deck. Um, both of them are in Heroism Cunning, and there's just uh, some neat stuff where, like, if you play Ezra on three and her on four, you can swing with Ezra first, and then he'll let you see the top card. So you can either choose to play it with Ezra, or you'll just know what's there so that with the on attack um you may discard a card right so you'll know yeah. whether it's going to trigger or not that sort of thing um a lot of cool synergy there but i'm just excited that i get another sabine and it's in cunning and i like to play sabine cunning you know we've been uh we've been working on that uh double cunning fennec shan deck as well and uh this card i would put it in there and you wouldn't use the on attack very often uh but just having a unit where you could ambush in and then not be attacked back uh since when it's exhausted that's yeah. pretty good in an ambush uh centric deck just by itself you know take off the rest of the text it's kind of interesting to think about i'm going to talk about plo kun kutoya i don't know what that's a reference to it must be from the clone wars or something i just know him as the pilot guy that gets blown up uh five for a three six cunning heroism force jedi republic has ambush as well and coordinate raid three. So uh, yeah, you get the coordinate on law. Suddenly you've got a six six coming out of nowhere uh, for five. That's our plus with coming. ambush. That's what I'm talking about. That's why I'm. Ta that's why he's coming out of nowhere. Yeah, he's, he's ambushing. I know. He just. Uh, I mean, good. there's not much else to say. Like if you have coordinate on, he's just a house. Yeah. He is. Um, yeah, he's a he's a Zuckus. I would with uh, a four lamb on the board. I would put him in my uh, my cunning version of uh, heroism Boba Fett, and then he comes in as a um, seven six, takes out a lot of stuff, because I mean in that deck a lot of things live. Yeah, you're playing durable stuff, and you're doing so by using your creative thinking, oh, which yeah. is the next card we're going to talk about. It's a two cost event. It is a trick. Heroism and cunning are the aspects. You exhaust a non-unique unit, and then you create a clone trooper token. I actually think that this card is pretty good for a common, and I think that in limited and especially draft, this will be a highly sought-after card. Absolutely, yeah. You get a 2-2, two -two and you get to exhaust something. And sure, it says non-unique, but like that's going to cover a lot of stuff, right? Even exhausting the right battle droid token at the right time is going to be relevant, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I totally agree. I think it's going to be big and limited, and uh, I've got a feeling it could end up in some decks, too. Just another strong cunning card. I love the art, too. <laughs> yeah, the art is great for this card, yeah. Uh, if you're if you're listening, it's uh, a clone trooper. Some clone troopers kind of peeking around a doorway, and one of them is holding up the head of a battle droid in front of this, like, sensor to gain entry somewhere. I don't know. It's funny. Into our just heroism cards now. Republic Commando. Uh, two five for three Republic clone trooper coordinate gives it saboteur and that's it yeah sometimes that's all you need though yeah. right could be good again think of lots of ways to buff clones and troopers and Republic um, could end up doing more with saboteur and man saboteur is just not a keyword that gets enough credit it is it is so strong like in that Fennec Shanless again like when I tag people yeah. and like, uh, they're like, oh, I have a shield. And I'm like, yeah, am yeah, Saboteur. And they're like, wait, what? Uh, like, oh, yeah, yeah that uh, exists. <laughs> yeah. My shield doesn't well, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. Oh, I love big ships. Oh, yeah, big ships. So the next one is Tranquility, the inspiring flagship. This is a seven-cost space unit that is just heroism, has a 7-6 stat line. It is a Republic vehicle in cap capital ship. When played, you may return a Republic unit from your discard pile to your hand, and on attack, each of the next three Republic cards you play this phase costs one less. That has a lot of value if you are going to be playing three cards, and it helps that when you play it, you return one to your hand. So, you know, doing that quick math here, you draw two cards a turn, this gets one back. Yeah, that's three cards. Yeah, it's uh, potentially a, a closer. And... Uh, Heroism doesn't have a lot of these. Uh, you've got home one, but this is really only the second big ship that's uh, pretty playable. And the fact that it's just Heroism, you can include it in a lot of decks. I'm very excited about trying to put this one to work. I think it's a great card. I think it's going to look amazing in, hyper, in uh, hyperspace. Oh, yeah, so, the art is good for hyperspace I'm, for sure. I'm very hyped for this one, for sure. 
And uh, we do, there was one more that was released since I put everything in OBS. Can I just drag it over a second? Oh my gosh, it worked. I was going to say, it's got to be Look on top that. of things, right? Look at that. I was able to drag it in from another folder. Our, our final bonus cunning card. Go ahead, take it away. So this is on top of things. It is a two cost upgrade in cunning. When played, attached unit can't be attacked this phase unless it has sentinel. It also provides plus two plus zero. And interestingly enough, in the traits, even though it's an upgrade, it has trick, which I really dig because uh, it's just cunning. And, you know, you were mentioning Jabba earlier and how the set one Jabba hasn't really found a home. Well, Jabba can now find this because yep. he searches for tricks when you play him. So I'm always on the lookout for any cards that say trick. Uh, the art uh, was the first thing that jumped out at me because it's on top of things. And the art is Padme from episode two when she's on top of the thing that they were all chained to. I don't Doesn't know what you Obi -Wan would call that. Like, say, like she's on top whatever. of things. I think he says she's uh, on top right. of things. Like, there's so too. many layers to this as well. Yeah. She's literally on top of things. It's also the line, et cetera. So, um, yep. yeah, I'm I like, I love it. I, I, I want to direct your attention to like her facial expression. Like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this bigger so you can see it. This, this is the expression I have when I'm trying to, like, get two Lego pieces apart and they're just not coming apart. That's I think that's the best uh, visual representation of that experience I've ever seen. Maybe, maybe it's because it's the chains there, but to me it looks like the... It reminds me of when Leia's choking out Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> you could Photoshop that, I suppose. Yeah. True enough. All right, well, that, uh, that'll that do it for our yeah, spoiler mega episode. It's a shade under two hours. We we didn't have uh, any more time than that. But uh, what jumps at? Name, name one card before we close out that you're really, really hyped about. Sabine. Sabine, okay, that was a silly question. Uh, <laughs> name a card besides Sabine. Um, That is... Well, okay, so then I would say Asajj. But if I'm not picking, like, the Homer stuff... Sure. Um, it's, it's probably our multi-wived friend, Mr. Monday, because I, he can go on either side, uh, you know, heroism or villainy. Yeah. And he's just got such an interesting effect, right? Anytime that I can draw a bunch of cards and kind of fuel my, my plan and in a set where there's so much focus on playing lots of things and going wide, he just really stands out to me as something that I'm excited to build around. Yeah, there you go. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna name Tranquility. Uh, I just love big ships, and I think that one has such a strong effect that it's gonna end up in a lot of higher end, uh, you know, heroism decks. And I feel like we don't have enough high end heroism stuff, so I'm I'm excited about that. But yeah, I think that's gonna do it for the episode. Again, we just want to cover all the spoilers that have come out so far. We're probably gonna do one of these episodes periodically, rather than try to include a few in each episode down the line. Um, so let us know if you like that idea or if you'd like us to cover the spoilers more often and, uh, definitely like subscribe, all that stuff that helps the YouTube channel grow. We're so close to a thousand subs, please help us get there. And then of course, join the discord as well. Go to icecaveradio.com. There's a link to the discord there and a link to merch store, to the Patreon, to everything you can do to support, uh, more content here. Cause we like doing it. Hope you do too. And with that charmer, sing us out. May the force be with you. Oh, we did it. It's so great. <laughs>